Uh, good morning, we're in the locus topic and yesterday we encountered this idea of what is locus? It's somewhat the combination of thinking about shapes, then formalizing it and calling it geometry, then introducing a coordinate system on top of that, and then trying to encapsulate all of that in this one idea that includes all of the geometry, all of the reasoning through shapes, uh, to meet some shapes that were very familiar, but maybe in unfamiliar ways, like that circle. Do you remember the last circle we did? Twice as far from there as you are from here. So that's what we've been having a look at. And the parabola is the main object that we focus on within this topic of locus, which is why we follow it on from quadratic functions. Okay. Now I want you to remember with me, when I asked you to get out there on the serpentine wall and trace out this particular shape, it was based on two fixed features on the ground. What were the fixed features? Anyone want to give me one? Yeah, sure. A line. Okay, there was a line and then there was a? Tree. A tree. So I want, a, I want a straight line and I want a fixed point. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is onto our Cartesian plane here, we're going to add these on, but now we're going to be specific about what these features are and um, actually name things and talk about them in a way that allows us to um, understand this and be much more detailed about this. Not just like, oh, it's kind of over here, that thing over there. Everything's going to get named. You're going to get a lot of terminology here. Okay. So for starters, let's draw a parabola. Let's draw a parabola. Um, let's just draw the regular normal parabola we have, which it's, has its vertex at the origin, no shifting or anything like that. So something like, wrong color, this. That's not bad. Okay, now you could call this y equals x squared. I'm going to leave off telling you what it is just yet. But on to here, I want you to think about that tree and that line on the ground, right? And how we relate these two things together. When you positioned yourselves, I think you mostly found yourselves around here and you all stood quite close together. It's hard. The further you go away, the harder it is to measure, okay? So therefore, um, I want you to try and remember if that's where the shape was, where was that straight line, the one on the ground? Where was it in relation to the shape you guys traced out? Do you remember where it was? Hmm. On this diagram, I would say that where you guys were positioned here, the line on the ground was kind of behind you. Remember that? In fact, now that I'm thinking back, I wonder if it was a tree. I think it was me, actually. I think I was the point, okay? So you've got this straight line going along here. And then I said, I want you to be the same distance from here as you are from this fixed point up here. So that was me, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some names for these things, okay? This guy up here, around which the parabola kind of... Um, well, you, you thought it was a semicircle, right? But as you can see, if it's really a parabola, it's not. The algebra told us that yesterday. Um, around which it's focused is called, unoriginally, the focus. Okay? So this is also called the focal point. But this is what the parabola sort of crowds around. Okay? Then this line down here, it serves the purpose of telling the parabola which direction the parabola is going to be facing in, right? So if, for example, I had positioned this line over here at an angle, like so, can you see that the parabola would now be facing in a different direction? It'll be going that way rather than straight up and down, okay? So being that it directs the parabola, we call it the directrix. Directrix, plural directrices, that's a cool word, okay? So on this diagram here, we now have some language to describe what's going on, but there's more features here and more things that are important to us to try and understand uh, all of the different ins and outs of this thing. So remember I told you that every point on this parabola is the same distance from the focus as it is from the directrix. The very shortest distance between these occurs at the vertex. Can you see that? Because have a look and I'd love you to draw this in with me. This distance here is going to be the closest distance 
to the directrix because everything else is upward. So it must be further away. If I drew all these other vertical lines, they would clearly be further. Okay. So this length here is very important. The length from the, I should have labeled this as well, from the vertex up to the focus, also the shortest distance from the vertex to the directrix, we call this guy the focal length. And I want you to notice it's the same on both sides. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. This focal length is a really important number to this shape. In many ways, it defines what this shape is. So therefore, we give it a name, we call it A. Right? Now, this tells you, at least on this particular parabola, this tells you where the focus is, right? Because if I told you the vertex was at the origin and the focus is A units above the origin, then that makes the coordinate to the focus... What's the x-coordinate? Zero. And the y-coordinate will be A. So, for reasons that are still inscrutable to me, um, the focus is, by convention, called S. And its coordinates are 0, 8. In exactly the same way, since this focal length is the same, this is A as well, this length here. So therefore, I know the equation of this directrix. It's a horizontal line, in this case, meaning its equation will be y equals, y equals what? Negative A because it is clearly below the axis. Okay. All right, looking good so far. We're almost there. We have almost all the important pieces of information here. I want you to notice you've got the focus and the vertex lying on the axis of symmetry. I'm not going to draw that in for two reasons. Number one, I've already drawn it. It's the y-axis in this case. Number two, it's something you were familiar with before we introduced this idea, but I just want you to remember that it's there. One other feature, I think it's one. I think it's one. Yeah, one other, one other thing um, that I want to include on here, and it's, it's less important, but it will come up in some questions here and there, so you want to know what it is. It has a really funny name. So I'm going to draw the shape first, and then I'm going to give it the name. This thing here, a horizontal line that goes through the focus. Or I should say, a better way to say it, is it's a line that's parallel to the directrix, and passes through the focus. Uh, it goes across and it's at right angles to the um, axis of symmetry. It goes, let me say that again, it goes across and it's at right angles. So, get this, the Latin name for this, um, when we say things are across, like when I say, hey, think outside the box, uh, a formal name for that is called lateral thinking. Have you heard that phrase before? Lateral thinking, it means like think sort of sideways. Um, when we're measuring the position of things on the earth and we want to go across rather than up down, we call that latitude, right? They all come from this Latin word, latus. It means across, right? Latus. I said it was at right angles. Right angles? Do you remember there's a shape, there's a kind of quadrilateral that is characterized by the fact that it's all right angles. And so we literally call it in Latin right angle. Does anyone know what the shape is? the rectangle. So therefore, we say it's across at right angles. That's the name. That's what it's called. The lattice rectum. Okay? It goes straight across through the focus. It's parallel to the directrix. Now, I will let you work out. We're going to come to it in a minute. I will let you work out why the lattice rectum is important to this. In particular, I want you to have a think about its length. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, here are all the important features. And on this basis, we can work out the equation of this parabola. I said it looked kind of like y equals x squared, sort of. But let's find out what it actually is. Okay, Now, let's have a look at this thing. Um, I'm going to say there's some point. What am I going to call it? It can move along this parabola. So I'm going to call it p for point, and its coordinates are x, comma y, because it can move. All right. So this guy, P, the set of all points that P can occupy is called the locus of this parabola. Okay, let me say that again. The set of all points that P can exist in, can be located at, that is the locus. So sometimes you'll be asked for the equation of the locus. 
They may need equation of the parabola. Okay? 